Uh, okay, well, we'll move on to our next speaker. Um, sorry, Eric. Um, Matthew Barker? That's me. That's you, Matthew. Hello. Uh, Matthew Barker, Economic Foundations and Environmental Progress. Okay. Oh, yeah, he's here. He'll give you a five minute, a three minute, and a one minute. Hello everyone. Hello. 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 All right. So I just like to start by putting things into a little bit of context. Sorry. Okay. Uh, with kind of how I got interested in this. My background is in technology. I went to mechanical engineering technology at Promotion. And kind of started that because I kind of thought that what I was very passionate in was solving problems. And I thought that going into technology would help uh, solve the problems that would be that would be facing in the future. But what I found was there's already many, many brilliant people, and I'm sure you've heard a lot of them and are aware of a lot of the ideas uh, that are already solving many of the problems that we face right now with global warming and alternative energy. A lot of these things have already been solved. A lot of the problems uh, have already been analyzed by people much smarter than me. So. What I became interested in was, well, what's stopping us from implementing these solutions? My whole kind of life kind of has revolved around the why behind everything. So why if we have all these amazing and innovative solutions, have we not been able to implement them? So that's kind of what got me interested in things beyond technology, which is what got me interested into economic theory. Now, looking at economic theory from an engineering perspective is, let's just say it doesn't make any sense <laughs> <laughs> at all. It's the weirdest system ever. And when I started looking into things from a historical context, uh, it got worse, right? Um, there's really very little remnants of anything <coughs> that could be helpful uh, in the society that we have right now. Now, the reason why a lot of these great ideas and a lot of these great solutions cannot be implemented is because our economic value system has a very strong uh, reward and punishment system that is at ends with kind of cultural progress. We have goals as a society uh, to you know, reduce waste, be more efficient, and stop greenhouse gases. Now, these goals are in direct opposition of the foundations of our society. So let's just think about a hypothetical here. If everyone all of a sudden decided to just kind of be the perfect citizen, let's say, and we started implementing all of these solutions, uh, people rode their bikes all the time and, you know, were vegetarians and uh, all these things. Now, what do you think would be the immediate response at an economic level? It would almost be an instant global economic catastrophe. The entire foundation of the economic system works directly against the progress of civilization. Now, the reasons behind this really comes down to money. Now, we have to look at things from, I, I love quantification. I love crunching the numbers. Now, in engineering, this is very simple because we're using things that have some sort of value. Energy, you know, resources, uh, you know, these materials, they have certain uh, associations behind them that are, you can just look up. MATLAB, but money seems to have almost no real connection to anything in reality. So what these people are doing, because it seemed highly logical the decision that they were making from an outside perspective, until we look at, they're crunching the numbers, they're doing their math, there is math and economics, but it's math that's based on a fictitious value system. Uh, money has no association with reality. So the decisions that they're making are going to correspond uh, to that directly. So that's kind of 
where I started looking at things uh, and why we have no, you know, fuel cell cars and electric cars, and because we depend on the circulation of money through the job system in order to have a stable economic foundation. Okay. Now this is a fundamental problem because when we increase efficiency and increase technology, we're always going to have um, jobs disappear. That is the progress of civilization since uh, from the agricultural revolution to the industrial revolution. We do things more efficiently. We reduce waste. We stop. Um, this this will start eliminating jobs. Now, if you look at the Kyoto Protocol and the people who are opposed to it, then almost their entire argument revolves around the job system. It'll cost 500,000 jobs in the United States this, and a lot of these people are vehemently opposed. Now, people who are economic, um, green minded can go, well, these people are, you know, they're crazy. What are they doing? You can't put, this is so much more important than, uh, you know, these jobs that are going to be lost. This is the world we're talking about. But they are punished very quickly, and that's just kind of how the human mind works. When we have consequences that are right in front of our face, and consequences that are uh, years and years down the future, a lot of these people are going to be looking at the consequences that are right in front of their face. And it might be the wrong decision, but that's the decision that the fabric of society is kind of forcing them to make. It's making the easy decision, is to, let's, because we have the job system, we have to abandon the Kyoto Protocol. Now, this is why we need to change the value system that we have to something that is connected to reality. So when people are doing these calculations, who are making the decisions, the politicians, and the people running the corporations, uh, they will come to the right conclusion. Because when you're using money, you will always come to the wrong conclusion. So when we're doing these calculations, we need to be valuing things based off of natural resources and the amount of energy used. Now, when we start doing these, we will, it will lead us to a lot of interesting conclusions that will result in a lot of uh, job problems. Now, even in the, the green, the left and the right, everyone is still very obsessed with jobs. We need to get over this. This is something that is uh, totally counterintuitive to the past 2,000 years of human progress. Uh, everything has been about increasing standard of living while decreasing uh, the amount that we have to work. So that's why uh, we need a guaranteed income. Now a guaranteed income would allow us to, it would be much easier to make the right decisions. So say we have a small town, uh, a few years ago I did a presentation on this to a town of loggers. Now these people are very open to the idea of guaranteed income because they don't like cutting down trees, they don't like cutting down the forest, no one likes really working uh, in these horrible paper mills. You know, it's really stinky and it kind of ruins everything. But this is their only means of getting money. So this is really where the problem comes down to. When you have, you know, one in ten people working in the automotive industry and when you have all of these huge amounts of industry and jobs that are dependent on the destruction uh, of the world and the needless consumption of natural resources, uh, we are going to have a problem. And the problem is, when all these brilliant people come to uh, implement their ideas, they're going to be bought every single step of the way. This is why Al Gore can't save the world, right? He is he's going to be fought every step of the way. All of the solutions that are outlined by all of these brilliant people, they are going to be halted. And the amount of progress that we're going to be made in our current system is incredibly limited. Uh, we can have mild policy changes here and, you know, implement certain solutions, uh, but just so fractional. We can't actually move on until we actually face the fact that the progress of civilization, the progress of the green movement, the progress of technological advancement is at complete odds with a system that is totally outdated and has no attachment 
to the physical world. Uh, and this is uh, the real issue. And once people come to terms with this uh, and address this, that we have a value system that is completely useless uh, in, the kind of, in solving the kind of problems we have right now, we will not be able to implement all of these amazing ideas uh, and save the world.